Make no mistake, the Mini's forum, NARC XI7, is a laptop without a screen. Its release marks the launch of a whole new segment of computing I call slabs. This slab is a repurposed Intel NUC laptop kit turned into a vertical PC. And the result is very interesting. I kind of like it. It's also good for whacking someone when they try to steal your stuff. <coughs> the Mini's forum NUC XI7 features the i7-11800H, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. It's paired with an RTX 3070 mobile graphics card. I bought the barebones NUC X unit, so I need to add DDR4 soda memory, storage, and OS to get it functioning. Pre-built options are also available. Inside the box is the slab, a vertical stand, and screws, HDMI, manual, and 230 watt power supply. The outer panels of the slab are made out of metal, and the rest is plastic. The back panel is full of holes to provide extra airflow. The stand is mostly metal as well. Overall, from the outside, the build quality is pretty good. Intel's gaming skull design is also on there, which looks okay, I guess. I would have preferred the slab to be black with silver logos, but don't look a gift horse in the mouth, unless you paid for the gift horse, like I did. Mini PCs have good I.O. options for their size, while laptops don't, and the slab is very sparse on I.O. There's triple USB 10 gigabit, audio jack, SD card reader, and power mode button, which we'll come back to later. On the back, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. I'll always use a wide mouse and keyboard, so that would leave me with one USB Type-A and the Thunderbolt port remaining. I've got this USB-C hub for expansion, and I'll let you see the result. How's it hanging there, big fella? Hey, turn that camera off! The lack of ports are a problem for a desktop PC, any way you look at it. Dangling hubs aren't a great solution. You'll have to find one with a longer cable. Opening it up is an exercise in frustration. There are three screws down the bottom, which are easy enough to remove. But try and get that panel off. Pulling it firmly was a no-go. The only way to get it off is with full force and confidence. So you feel like you're gonna break it. Inside is the Intel laptop kit. You can see there's a large space for where the laptop battery would go. So technically, Mini's forum could have made the Narcix smaller, considering the amount of extra space. On the inside, the plastic doesn't look to be great quality. Definitely not like in the promo images. It's also disappointing to see the design doesn't take into account the ribbon cables, which should be straight. This is a pretty poor effort. As long as it works, right? The CMOS battery is easily accessible, but there are no thermal pads or heat sinks included for the M.2. There's no heat sink on the Southbridge either which controls storage, I.O. and other stuff. That's disappointing, as it gets pretty hot. Five sizable heat pipes and two fans handle cooling duties. For my tests, I'll be using 16 gigabytes of 3200 sodium memory, and for storage, Crucial sent me their new 2TB P3 Plus to check out. This is a PCIe Gen 4 drive with speeds of up to 5 gigabytes a second sequential. It's perfect for the NUC X, which has a Gen 4 M.2 slot. So, we'll see how it performs. The NUC X also features a Gen 3 slot, however, I don't know which one is which, and Mini's forum doesn't tell you in the manual. So I've got a 50% chance. Awesome. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Damn it! This is why I don't go to the casino. Here is the Gen 4 slot. Putting the NUC X back together again was also annoying. The panel didn't go back on easily. Once I did finally get it on, it just didn't fit snugly anymore on the top. But apart from that, excellent! Fantastic! The BIOS is simple, and you'll even find stuff left over from the laptop side of things, like the battery. There's an undervolting option at the BIOS level. In memory options, you can set a custom profile to change the memory multiplier, but it didn't allow me to go above the 3200MHz speed of the RAM in Windows. Here are the power options, and that's about it. I tested Ubuntu before installing Windows, and it worked fine with just the initial boot. Cool! I didn't test Chrome Flex because it's not for this. If you plan to use it with the NUC X, I'll smack you with the slab. <laughs> Let's go over the power mode button. In silent mode, the CPU and GPU have their max power limits dropped from 110 watts to 85 watts for the CPU and from 125 watts to 115 on the GPU. It makes a difference in both performance and noise, so I'm going to have both modes in the benchmarks to show you the difference. I think the closest competitor to the NUC X is Intel's much pricier NUC 12 Enthusiast Mini PC. 
My unit is currently performing well in its door stopping duties. I'll also add some recent minis. In single core, it doesn't matter which mode you use, it still gets beaten by every other intel unit in this lineup. It's 3% slower than NUC 11 Enthusiast and 17% behind the NUC 12 Enthusiast. In multicore, the NUC X i7 is behind NUC 12 Enthusiast by 26% but it's ahead of NUC 11 Enthusiast by 93%. If we change the mode to Silent, it's 16% slower than Gaming Mode. Overall, it still holds up okay against Torch Gen, but is clearly behind in productivity tests. Most of the Intel units do better at video encoding, with the NUC 12 Enthusiast ahead by 33%. NUC XI7 was ahead of NUC 11 Enthusiast by 34%. Gaming mode was 8% ahead of silent. The Gen 3 Intel drive I use for the OS is much slower than the Crucial P3 Plus, which is very close to its 5GB per second sequential claims. The 4KB performance is the most relevant for daily use, and again, it's much faster than the Gen 3 drive. The Crucial P3 Plus doesn't feature DRAM, so for large files, performance will eventually drop off. But otherwise, I found it to be a good budget-friendly drive and it comes with a 5 year warranty. The 2TB drive is rated at 440TB written. Moving on to graphics benchmarks. The 3070 is behind the ARC A770M by 3% in the DX11 benchmark. It's ahead by 56% against the NUC11 enthusiast. Gaming mode is 8% ahead of silent. In DX12, the NUC X i7 is behind by 4%, which is 57% ahead of the RTX 2060 found in the NUC 11 Enthusiast. Switching on game mode gained an extra 10%. The NUC 12 Enthusiast may look competitive here, but let's check out the performance in actual gaming. This Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmark shows just how far behind the NUC 12 Enthusiast can be against the RTX 3070 and the NUC X i7. It can get worse though. Here are the first 6 game results before I show some side by side comparisons. The NUC 12 Enthusiast is behind in everything, sometimes ridiculously behind. I do want to point out Doom Eternal. I think the 1% low underperforming is because of the 11th gen CPU found in the NUC XI7. It just can't keep up. Even though NUC 12 Enthusiast on average is behind a lot, he could be generous and say the more consistent frame rate is the winner here. The other three games are closer. Cyberpunk is another clear win for the NUC XI7. And again in Forza Horizon 5. And God of War is a surprise. Just messing with you. NUC 12 Enthusiast gets steamrolled. But Marvel's Spider Man is a win for the NUC 12 Enthusiast. Only because the 11800H CPU has trouble keeping up. Look at that CPU utilization compared to the 12700H. The RTX 3070 isn't even sweating. And there's another big win for the NUC XI7 in Uncharted Legacy Collection. <laughs> Wait till Sam hears about this. Yeah. So out of 11 games, the NUC 12 Enthusiast won 2, if I'm being generous. And that's only because of the inferior 11th gen CPU in the NUC X i7. But I'd rather the 11th gen CPU than the ARC A770M graphics, that's for sure. Here's the average uplift for the NUC X i7 against the NUC 12 Enthusiast in the 11 games tested. For emulation tests, I want to see how Breath of the Wild performs in SEMU, since the smaller minis can't get 60fps in this game. Both units had no problem with it. Now let's move on to PS3 games and see how our contestants perform side by side. NUC XI7 has a higher frame rate in Wipeout HD Fury, even with a weaker CPU. Same deal with Skate 3. Motorstorm Pacific Rift requires a powerful CPU and the margin in this game tightens. But with Arc graphics, you've got graphical glitches, so I give the win to the NUC XI7. I hope that clears up any doubt that the NUC 12 enthusiast gets a thumb down in gaming performance. One other thing to note is that the integrated graphics aren't available with the Mini's Forum NUC i7X. 
That means no quick sync for faster playback in video editing software such as Adobe Premiere. The Mini's forum NUC XI7 did a decent job of keeping the CPU cool, but with game mode enabled, there was power and thermal limiting. The RTX 3070 was also kept to be low the NUC 12 enthusiast. Idle power draw isn't too bad with the Mini's forum slab, but maximum is where we see how good its performance per watt is. The NUC 12 uses an insane amount of power for worse performance, but did I mention it makes a great doorstop? The crucial P3 Plus drive does have a sensor on the ASIC controller and it hit 93C, which isn't great. Neither is 71C for the drive itself. Some thermal pads connecting to the middle side panel would have made a big difference and worked as a giant heatsink. All that needed to be done was cut out some plastic where the NVMe drives are and connect the two. A missed opportunity there. I was pretty happy with the noise levels of the NUC XI7. Silent mode is especially great if you don't mind a slight hit to performance. The fan noise annoyed me much less than the NUC 12 enthusiast, that's for sure. Overall, the Mini's Forum NUC XI7's performance price ratio is impressive. It does have two flaws that can't be ignored. One is sort of fixable, and the other isn't. The lack of ports is definitely a problem. It's something I can live with, but a genuine annoyance. But the 11th gen Intel CPU is a downer when 12th gen has been out for a year and performs much better. The outside build quality is fine, the inside engineering needs improvement. Noise levels are pretty impressive and the price is right. And I didn't find the difference in size to be a big problem. After Intel's NUC 12 enthusiast failed to meet my needs for a small gaming PC, I had to look elsewhere and I found two candidates, the Mini's Forum NUC X Slab and the HX90G. So far, the NUC X is winning, but I still need to test the HX90G before making my decision. Review of that is coming soon, but in the meantime, Check out my review of why the NUC 12 Enthusiast is one of the most disappointing releases of this year. Cheers!